Bitcoin has just seen a weekly candle close below the 200 moving average. What can this tell us about the future price action? Let's get into it. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. We're here to discuss Bitcoin talking about both the short term and the macro charts today. Obviously, Bitcoin has just finished that weekly candle closing it below the 200 moving average. We'll discuss what impact this could potentially have on the charts and what it means for the macro trend. We'll also talk about the short term price action, discuss the breakout on the four hour RSI and talk about how high could Bitcoin realistically go on the small time frame or is the current move extended already and about to see a rejection before we get into it guys smash that like button hit the comment button subscribe to the channel of course we do daily videos of bitcoin we talk about the technicals the structure and the data alone we also cover the broader markets and economic data so you can go ahead and get all of it on this channel if you're interested in joining our Telegram channel, that is going to be the second link down below in the pinned comments. You'll get access to all of our charts, updates, analysis, educational posts, news events, information, and of course, all of our videos. If you're interested in joining our VIP group, where we post daily trade signals such as this one over here, with specific entries, targets, stop losses, including our exclusive group chat, where we do a whole variety of different trades and much more. As you can see in the charts over here, we post a whole bunch of stuff in here, including additional scalp trades. You can get access to that right now for a nice discount. We have 10 to 30% off our memberships. Go ahead and contact me via the free channel. This sale ends in 36 hours. Let's get into the video guys, starting off with the market data for today. So currently we're coming very close to the end of the month. We've got about 36 hours left and we're sitting around 1.75% in the green for Feb. Again, not a lot of movement this month we've seen. A little bit of volatility as we approach that major, major macro resistance sitting at 25k. But all in all, if we look at the overall percentage change for a month, we're very much all around where we started. Look where the month opened. It opened around this area and we have very much ended around that same area. We had deviation toward the downside and we had deviation toward the upside. Okay. Looking at overall volatility and volume right now, we are expecting that to start rise over the coming hours. Of course, we are entering the new week. We do have liquidations down about 40% and we are seeing 24 hour volume hanging around that same point around 52 million. Overall volatility is sitting at 2.69% for the 30 day period. And for our liquidations, we can see on the smaller time frame, guys, we go down over here, the 15 minute chart in the last couple days, in the last day, should I say, we've seen a lot of shorts liquidate as we approach that 26K breakout point, which was over here, this rally towards the upside liquidated a lot of late shorts. These late shorts have been taken around 23,000 or below 23,300 and liquidated above. And in a smaller time frame, we have seen some longs liquidate as we did see a small little pullback from 23.6K as expected, all the way back down to 23.3. Again, guys, we'll be discussing the short-term price action today, so we'll get into that when we get up to it. But for the DXY and the broader markets, the DXY has definitely now reached our first target zone, okay? This was our first major target. We were looking at the uh, the blue box. We we're looking at 104 and finally 105. So technically, the DXY has reached where we expected it to go. From here, we are going to see a little bit of a reaction. We could potentially see a pullback from the DXY. Now we are at resistance. So if we do see a pullback on the DXY, guys, we could potentially see the markets and the broader markets see some sort of relief. So let's go down to a smaller time frame and discuss where the DXY could rally toward the downside or where it could drop towards if it had to pull back. We'll be looking at this uptrending support line, so we're looking at anything along this uptrending support round. Around 104.5 would be a realistic pullback point. If we do lose 104.5 level, we could see a larger pullback if we are developing what we'll call a rising wedge here toward this 103 to 104 level once more. Again, the DXY does continue toward the upside. We are going to expect the markets to continue to fall. 
the DXY does drop toward the downside, we will expect the markets to see some rally. Looking at the Dow Jones, of course the Dow Jones has broken that daily candle below our symmetrical triangle formation, resulting in that breakdown, reaching our first target of 33,000 and making its way towards that next target. We're looking at the S&P 500 here, again losing the 4,000 and the uptrending support line on that daily chart, not looking too amazing here, underneath resistance again we are needing to get above this 4030 level over here that's a local high over here to see a continuation back up to the upside again if that does not occur we're going to see a continuation downwards and again if the dxy drops we're going to see that continuation downwards if the dxy does reject here a break back into this rising wedge formation could be possible but like i said we would need to break above four thousand and thirty dollars to see any sort of confirmation of that break and a continuation back to the upside. No matter if we break back in this structure, the structure is still bearish. Again, if we break back into it, we could be looking for a higher 4,000 target, but eventually a pullback on a larger scale would be likely to occur considering the current market structure. Moving on to bond yields, bond yields are continuously rising at 4.82% again, next target sitting around that 5% range. Let's get into Bitcoin guys, starting on the larger time frame, then breaking it down to a small time frame and everything in between. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss my favorite exchange, BitGet. If you're looking for a safe, honest, reliable and accurate exchange, look no further than BitGet. You can sign up by the link in the description to support the channel and get access to three exclusive perks. That being up to $5,005 US dollars in trading rewards, up to 15% discount on your trading fees, and exclusive access to our Mega Wild promotion campaigns that we run every few months. Alongside that, guys, BitGet is a non KYC exchange, meaning you do not have to KYC, it is completely optional. BitGet also has a protection fund that secures user assets against external hacks and threats in the space. Alongside that guys, BitGet offers up to 125x leverage on futures with extensive amount of trading pairs and liquidity on the market. I highly recommend signing up to BitGet, it is the exchange I've been using for over a year and a half now, including all of our members. If you're interested in signing up, trading there and supporting the channel, you can do so with the link in the description. Thanks for listening. So, we have recently seen that weekly candle close on the obviously big quest price action here we're on the macro chart on the log scale over here we have the 200 moving average we're on that weekly you can see right over here we have just closed a weekly candle as a rejection candle from the 200 moving average now you're probably thinking well what does this really mean is this bearish and here's the answer to this a moving average is, is not a moving average is not a resistance a moving average is simply an average price what it represents it represents the strength of a trend so you can be in a uptrend below a moving average, but it would be a weak uptrend. So if we're looking at the macro over here, this will be classified as an uptrend, right? Because we broke out of our falling wedge, but it has not developed into a macro uptrend or a strong uptrend. It is still a weak uptrend. It is still classified as a reversal pattern or a reversal. For us to enter a macro uptrend, the price is going to need to have to break over the 200 as this is where the strength of the trend shifts from weak to strong. We have a strong uptrend. So looking for a weekly break above this level will be what will signal that shift in the trend. So the weekly candle close or rejection below the 200 is not necessarily going to say, okay, we're wrecked, we're going to new lows. It's not saying that. But what it is saying is the potential flip in the macro trend has now been delayed. It has not happened yet. It has now been delayed. We're going to have to wait to see what happens over the next week. We could potentially break up back above it. And we'll talk about that in a second. And if we do, then the trend will flip. But whilst we remain below it, the potential for a rejection on the larger scale remains probable. Okay. I'm going to say it one more time. While we remain below it on the weekly, the potential for a rejection towards these lower targets, towards 20,000, towards 21,500, towards 19,000 are still very much likely. So let's talk about the daily chart. What we are currently seeing is we're seeing a rejection from that 24, 25K level, an incredibly important level on the chart, not only representing the 200 moving average, but of course, representing that 
uh, 50 EMA on that monthly chart. Again, you can see the 50 EMA in the chart over here, represented by that red line. Another major trigger point that Bitcoin's price is going to have to break above. And again, this closes in one day and 21 hours to see that overall trend shift. If you look at the 50 EMA, every single time we've closed a monthly candle above it, from going towards it or going down towards the downside, we end up remaining above that trend line or above that moving average until we go into the next bear market. So it is a good initial indication. And in this instance will be a great indication that the overall trend on Bitcoin has flipped toward the upside. Like I said already, currently, this is nothing more than a reversal. It's an uptrend, but it is a reversal. And you're probably thinking, well, why do you sound bearish? I'm definitely not bearish. I've said it many times, we bought here, we bought down over here 16,500 and we bought over here. We've been trading this uptrend the entire time, but we are objective, we are realistic. We look at the charts without emotions and we do know while we're at resistance, resistance needs to be treated at, as resistance and the potential for rejections are there. We do not long resistance, we short resistance until it is proven the other instance. Okay, so from a structural standpoint, how are we looking right here? What are we looking at? How are we looking? From a structural standpoint, you would know from our last video, we have developed something that you would call of a rising wedge. Now a rising wedge is a bearish structure. We have an ascending trend line of support and we have an ascending trend line as resistance and these trend lines are converging towards each other, meaning they're compressing and compression on structure means decreasing momentum, decreasing volatility, and decreasing volume, okay? We don't have to know that as long as we know there's a structure that is converging, we can know or we can infer that volume, volatility, velocity, speed, momentum, all of those things are starting to decrease. That signifies that the overall trend that we're in, and the trend is represented by this uptrending support, we can almost put an arrow instead of a line, the trend that we are in is starting to weaken, okay? And while we have a weakening trend at resistance, the probability of a breakout becomes lower. Remember, trading is about probabilities. If you're trying to be correct 100% of the time, you're going to make emotional decisions, okay? Trading is not about being correct 100% of the time, it is about putting yourself in a position of statistical advantage as best you can using technical analysis, using risk management, using a whole variety of different analysis techniques as much as you can to basically reap a net profit overall. That is what it's about. So taking longs at resistance is the opposite of what you want to do when you're trading. That is emotional, okay? So what we're looking at here, guys, in a larger time frame is, of course, a rising wedge. Now, a rising wedge is a bearish structure, but like I just said, the uptrend is a uptrend until it is not. We are at resistance, we are at an uptrend. The probability for a breakdown is about 78%. The probability for a break out of a larger time frame of this resistance is equally as low, right? We do need to have an opposition of that 78%. So we're looking at about 22%, we're looking at 30%, whatever it's gonna be, it's gonna be quite low. So knowing the probabilities, the probabilities of a rejection and a breakdown are statistically favorable. Now that doesn't mean we can't see a rally towards the upside. Going back to the smaller time frame, guys, we go back to a four hour chart here, on this chart over here, we can see a few things. We can obviously see we had a short term breakout of a descending channel or descending wedge over here, a falling wedge on the RSI and the price action. This facilitated a move towards the next major resistance. Where was the next major resistance? The next major resistance was going to be the local low point, okay? The local low point of the zone between that consolidation of 23,600, okay, and 25,000, the area of which we facilitated a horizontal channel development within for the last couple of weeks. You can see we've per per perfectly come up to retest these lows and we got rejected coming towards that downside again. Again, this is going to be the first major rejection point. If we reject here, we're likely to continue towards the downside. If we do continue towards the downside, we will be losing this uptrending support on the daily. We will lose the uptrending support on daily and our next target is going to be this range over here between 21,000 to 22,000, sitting in the middle, 21,500-ish is going to be the next target. However, guys, however, if we are able to reclaim, I'm gonna delete this, all this stuff on our chart. If we're able to reclaim 
that 23,600 level, where will Bitcoin go next? The possibility for a, a rally then increases as we have broken over the trigger. So where could Bitcoin go next? Well, we'll be looking at that upper rising wedge resistance, a rally back towards upside to about 25,600 ish for a final retest would be possible before that final correction toward the downside. Those are the scenarios we are looking at currently. That is what we're looking for. Now you're probably thinking, well, well, there must be a scenario here where Bitcoin could negate this bearish pattern and continue upwards. Yeah, there are two scenarios. There are two scenarios. So number, scenario number one, is we come down, we find support of 21,500, we create a new base, or we drop below 21,500, we create a new base of support above 19,200 and 18,300, and then build that rally back upwards. Or the next one is we have an aggressively strong candle above 25,000, strong enough to basically liquidate all the shorts and facilitate you know liquidity coming into the market uh, activating those orders and then we have orders laid on top of each other which pushes the price even higher so to basically um, what you would call um, disregard the bearish pattern we see here the bearish uh, pattern which is that rising wedge we're going to need to see an intense amount of volume push into the market if we get back above 25,000 so much volume so that we basically ignore this downtrending this this bearish structure we're forming and we push right through this low resistance range because we do have a low resistance range here we have a range between 20,000 and 28,000 as per the VRPV which is incredibly low, low resistance so the possibility for a breakout over here and continuation upwards is definitely possible but again we're in this rising wedge structure so the question is are we able to have enough buying and volume that will basically ignore the statistical probability that this, this bear structure will break down and will break toward the upside facilitating that growth. That is what you're betting on right now. If you're expecting a break over 25k, it is less likely, but it is not impossible. If it does happen, we'll be on top of it. We'll be watching it. We'll be ready to go. We'll be trading it. We'll be talking about it. So don't worry about that yet, but it just keep it on your mind that there is no guarantees in the game yet. We are in the middle of the structure the price is technically still an uptrend, although the downtrend is gaining strength. If you do look at the VRPV once more over here, you can see that we do have a little hiccup over here um, on the VRPV, suggesting this $23,000 range is now um, gaining a little bit of strength and support. But if we do lose that $23,000 level once more, again, for the second time, we are going to be heading back down towards this level over here, which is at 22,000, filling this gap on a volume range over here as the price is going to move quite fast and quite quickly towards that level if that does occur. So let's finish up the video, guys, talking about the technicals on this daily and then back to the smaller time frame, and then we'll finish up the video. So like we said already, guys, we can see according to the market cipher A, which is a combination of these moving averages, we are above the 50 MA. So the overall trend, overall strength is upwards, not only above the 50 MA, but we are also above the goals and channels. So the overall trend right now is still upwards. However, the upward trend, like we said already, is definitely weakening, right? We have bearish divergences on the daily. And this is a new information. This is stuff we've been talking about for a long time now, okay? Bearish divergences on a daily, bearish divergences here on the MACD and the RSI, moving on to a three-day chart, we can see these divergences are still popping up. We can see momentum is starting to lose its positive strength. We are still very much positive. We have positive momentum, but we have weakening positive momentum, meaning we're about to get that cross over here on the three-day, signifying a shift from strong positive to declining positive momentum, which could drag that price further. But it's very important to note, the larger time frame is lagging, right? If you're looking at these indicators, at this point here, if you looked at the indicators over here and eliminate all of this, I'm going to show you an example. Let's go. Let's just drag this back. We eliminate all this. The indicators look bullish, right? We had a green dot. We had the RSI breaking above 70 again. We had the MACD printing two green bullish strength candles. It looked bullish. But this is where larger time frame indicators trap you. Because in reality, guys, the larger time indicators are smooth versions of smaller time frames. If you want to see what the price is going to do at resistance, do not look at the larger time frame indicators. These are going to give you overly bullish or overly bearish outlooks depending on where the price is 
as it is lagging. Keep that in your mind. So a lot of people were saying, we're going back, we're going back over 25K, we're booming up, we're booming up. Well, we were saying, guys, look at the smaller time frame, look at the reality, look at the facts objectively, and you would notice that we are starting to lose strength here. And in fact, we saw a strong rejection that we profited absolutely massive profits from. Okay, keep that in mind. Let's go down a smaller time frame. As we can see, guys, the next trigger for a continuation upwards through that resistance zone, and we're gonna go ahead and bring this chart back to what it was before really quickly. Is going to be that break over the 50 EMA, and you could you could have seen that just there on a four-hour chart, which we'll go back to. The break over 50 EMA is going to be sitting just above this 23,600 trigger. Breaking above that level could send the price action up, but I do not think it's going to be going up fast, as you can see. We do have a fair bit of resistance in this range. We're not entering any low volume ranges here. We have a small little gap between 24,000 and 24,500 that we could fill a little bit faster, but all in all, we do have a lot of resistance here. What I will notice and point out is that RSI did break out on the four hour. This is giving us some bullish strength moving upwards. Breaking over this horizontal resistance will then trigger a continuation upwards that could potentially take us upwards into this 25K range. So although it is possible right now, guys, on the larger time frame, an extended rally past 25 is unlikely the week we close below that 200 moving average i'd be definitely a little bit more cautious this week and i think this week is going to be a very important week as again it's going to determine whether or not the next weekly candle close can break above 25k and put the overall trend in an uptrend or whether or not we will continue toward the downside and if we do continue towards the downside guys the overall uptrend will be breaking once we lose a 21.8 or this 21.5 level on the three day uh and the daily over here will result in that continuation downwards going back to the monthly chart i'm sorry for dragging the video on for so long over here guys you can see if we do lose this local low over here that would be what it takes to confirm the breakdown from 25k one more time a loss of 21.5 to 21.8 is going to be what it takes to confirm the breakdown from 25k as permanent resistance, a resistance that's going to facilitate a continuation downwards on the higher time frames. Of course, we have a double top, which isn't looking good. We have a rejection from the 200, we have a rejection from the Gaussian channel, we have a rejection on the smaller time frames on the horizontal range. Again, it is not looking very, very good for Bitcoin, but there is still definitely hope. So I'm going to leave the video, guys. If you've got any questions, link down below. You can go ahead and join the Crypto Academy, learn how to trade, learn how to do analysis, and learn how to chart like I do. Learn how to use market patterns, structures, candlesticks, and everything in between. Learn how to apply risk management and market psychology in your trading. Go ahead and email us. The email is down below for more info. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it beneficial and informative. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. Remember to subscribe, and we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Cheers.